Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 15 of my Ultimate Python 3 tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to cover both file I.O. as well as tuples, and of course, I'm going to present you with some problems you can solve. So I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. All right, so I'm just going to jump directly into the code. If you want to be able to work with the file system, you have to import the OS module. Now you're going to be able to create or use an already created file with open and I am going to use with here which is going to guarantee that the file will be closed if the program crashes for some reason and then I'm going to say open I'm then going to define the file name that I want to work with if it isn't created it will be created for you I'm then going to say that I want to open it with writing permission like that you could also open it with a, a pending, which means you would go to the end of the file with an A there, but I'm going to put W. This is going to overwrite everything that's already there. And I'm going to set the encoding to UTF-8. And with this, the uni uh, Unicode is going to be used, which we are well aware of because we have been working with Unicode for a while. And I'm going to say from this point forward, I want to refer to this as my file once it is open. Okay, so I got that set. Now we can write random information to the file. We can just say my file and call write on it. And then you can just say some random text. You can throw a new line inside of there, more random text and another new line and some more okay just to put some information inside of there and now we wrote to the file so what I want to do now is I want to read from the file now you're going to read from the file by default again I'm using with here again to close the file for me again I'm gonna say that I want to use the same file I used previously I'm going to define encoding once again UTF-8 and again I'm not putting a mode in here because by default it defaults to reading now we're going to be able to read data in a few different ways we're going to be able to use the read command which we're going to see here and that's going to read everything into one string we're going to be able to use read line which is going to read everything including the first new line and then our other option is read lines which is going to return a list of every line which includes each new line but I'm going to use read here just to get everything all at one time and I'm going to print it also so I'm going to say my file read or I guess underscore here there we go and after you do that if you want to double check if the file has been closed you can say my file closed and it will tell you if the file was closed and then we can run it and you're going to see whoops got an error here let's go and change this to my file Oop, and I got an error because I forgot to put here as my file okay got that set run it again and there you can see it wrote to the file and it read out of it and yes indeed with did close the file after I was done with it alright so good stuff now you're also going to be able to get the file name that you're working with by saying print and my file followed with name let's go get a couple more things you can get the access mode for the file so we can say print my file mode you can go and rename your file just by going OS and rename so say that you want to rename my data text to my data to text You can do that. You could also delete the file altogether. So remove my data text. You can also come in here and change directories and such. So let's say you wanted to create a new directory. You go OS, make directory, and my directory. You can then change to that directory by saying OS change directory and then change to the newly created directory you just created we can then verify that we actually did change to that directory by saying current directory and get it and then go os dot get c 
WD. And then finally, we could also remove a directory by changing back to that directory and then removing it. But of course, be very careful whenever you're doing all this that you don't mess up your file system. Just wanted to show you, whoops, it's remove directory like that. I'm not going to remove these two things, but I'm going to do everything else. Oop, got an error because I forgot that I renamed it. So let's change it to two. And there you can see I am showing my current directory that I am in. And you just have to trust me on everything else that worked by looking at your own file system. All right, so cool stuff. And now what I'm going to do is show you how you can read one line at a time with ReadLine. So I'm going to go and get rid of all this stuff except for right here. So everything else is going to stay the same. And I'm going to say with open. And I want to open up my data to text file. Going to define encoding once again as UTF-8 as my file. I'm going to say line number is equal to 1. And now what we're going to do is use a while loop that's going to loop until the data that you're trying to read in is empty. So I'm going to say while true get a line. I'm going to say my file. And here we're going to use read line instead. And I'm going to say if not line, which is going to come back as true if the line is empty. In that situation, I'm going to break out of looping. Otherwise, I'm going to print whatever the line is. So I'll say line and then line number and then let's put a space in there, colon and line and then I'm also going to say that I do not want new lines and then after I do that whoops let's get rid of this extra end that got in there somehow and then I'm going to increment the line number plus equal to one and if I run it you're going to see that it cycles through all of those different lines that I had here and outputs all of that information all right so good stuff and now I want to take everything that you just learned and I want you to go and try to solve another problem. Now we're going to keep import OS. And what I want you to do to solve this problem is I want you to cycle through each line of text and output the number of words and the average word length. And here is your sample output. It's going to look exactly like that. So you can pause your video right now, or I'm going to go and create the whole thing right now. All right, so we already imported OS. So I'm going to say with open, I'm going to be using my data too again. And I'm going to say encoding is equal to, guess what, UTF-8 as my file, then it's very similar to the last example I gave you. Line number. Now let's keep it like this. I am then going to create a while loop just like I did before to cycle through until we get a value, until there are that we get a line that's empty. I'm going to read the first line of text and I'm going to do that by saying my file read line. I'm going to check if there is a line, I saying if line, or if not line, I mean. And if there's nothing there, I'm going to say break. I want to leave. Otherwise, I'm going to print line followed by my line number, just as I said in the sample text, just as you can see right here. Then what's it want me to do? Well, it wants me to print out the number of words, as you see right there. So what I can do is just go word list is equal to and use split to create a list. See, we're using a lot of things we've used before. Now I can say print number of words and then just go len on my word list to get the number of words that are in there. I can then count out how many characters are in it. So I'm going to say character count start off at zero and then I'm going to say for word in word list for 
character in word character count plus equal to one for each of the individual characters inside of there. And then after I do that, I can find out the average number of characters. So average num characters is equal to character count divided by len word list. And then I can print out that information. Average word length and let's say I want to make sure that it's no more than two decimal places I can throw that inside of there and then format average number of characters and I can't forget to also come in here and also go line number and increment that by one each time and if we run that code you're gonna see that it provides me with all that information all right, so cool stuff. Hopefully you got that right. If not, don't worry about it. And now we're going to talk about tuples. All right, so a tuple is basically like a list. The major difference, however, is that once you create a tuple, the values within it cannot be changed. And let's just go and create a tuple. So you're going to go tuple is equal to. Difference with tuples is you use parentheses. And just throw random values inside of there. Now let's say you wanted to get a value. You can do so using an index. So we can say first value. And what is that first value? Well, it's going to be my tuple. And again, just zero. And you can also get slices. So I'm just going to say print my tuple. And I'm going to start at the zero index up to but not including three. I can also get the number of items in a tuple. So print and let's just go and output length here so we can tell what we're doing. And len, again, my tuple. You can, whoops, make sure you close that parenthesis right there. We're also going to be able to join tuples. Let's go more fibs is equal to my tuple plus and 13, 21, and 34. We can check if a value is inside a tuple or not. So we could do 34 in tuple, just by saying 34 in more fibs. What else can we do? We can iterate through a tuple, of course. I in more fibs and print and we can convert a list into a tuple. So we can go and create a list. So let's say something like 55 and 89 and 144. And how we would convert it is like that and just say tuple a list. And what else can we do? We can convert a tuple into a list by going a list is equal to list and a tuple. We can get the maximum and minimum values. And yes, I'm going to show you the output for all this by saying, well, this would be, yeah, max a tuple. And then the same type of thing for min. Change this to min. Change this to min. And I think that's about it. Let's run it. And there you can see all of our output. All right, so cool stuff. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. And in the next part of the tutorial, we're going to start talking about classes and objects and getters and setters. And on top of that, we're going to create two warriors that are going to fight to the death. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And like always, please leave your questions and comments.